morning and I greet you all, uh, brothers and sisters, friends and family and our fellow South Africans in the name of our Lord and the personal Savior Jesus Christ. My name is Evangelist Itu Maboye and I'm looking forward to spending this precious time with you and I pray that God may add a blessing upon your life and all the endeavors, um, activities that you continue to engage in. And uh, I want us to just share a prayer before we continue with our message. Let's pray to the Lord, our Father. We want to thank you this morning and we bless your most holy name. We give you all honor and glory. You are worthy, Lord, of our thanksgiving. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our gratitude. And we want to thank you for this time that you have given us. Be with us now and strengthen us with your word. Speak to us and challenge us and counsel us and move amongst us and stay with us. And we pray, Lord, that at the end, when you have spoken, each one of us may come to a place of repentance as we study your word. Lord, we don't need to invite you. You are here because where two or three are gathered in your name, the promise is clear, I will be there. And Lord, you are amongst us and we want to acknowledge the presence of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, beloved friends, we want to look into the book of Revelation chapter 14 verses 6 and 7. And we study about John the Revelator. Uh, John, a very powerful man, he's in prison. But he's not imprisoned because his mind is connected to God. He's not intimidated by the environment of the prison because he's connected. He is free in his mind and he allows the outworking of the Holy Spirit uh, to operate with him, within him and through him. And he's trusting God during this time of a crisis. His hope is in God, his father and creator. And he's got foresight beyond 
the current situation in his life and he looks beyond uh, the circumstances, the pain, the suffering, the torture of being in prison. John is an interesting disciple of Jesus. Uh, one of the last disciples uh, of Christ um, to be alive during this time. And he writes uh, the last book of the Bible where he reveals uh, the last day's events. And uh, this is one book where we find a blessing promised to those that read it. Uh, the Bible says in Revelation 1 verse 3, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that do what the prophecy of this book says. Uh, it's a very interesting book that we are looking into and it's one book that has been referred to as a difficult book in the Bible. Uh, one of the most complex and difficult to understand in the Bible. But the truth of the matter is, until you come to verse 3 of Revelation 1, you have not understood what this book is capable of what it can accomplish to those and for those that read it. I'm pleased that we study from the book that gives us a blessing when we study it. And there is a promise that is so clear for each one of us. And that promise is a life of blessedness. And I have no doubt that this morning, God is adding a blessing upon each one of us, viewers, friends, family members, and everybody else in who's listening and following this program. And we are looking at the book of Revelation chapter 14 for our installment and verses 6 and 7 and our caption this morning says the worldwide warning message the worldwide warning message and i read it to your hearing and i saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. I read it once again, and I saw another angel. Uh, John says, I saw when he writes this book, he, his eyes are plucked out. But thank God he's not intimidated by sight because his mind is plucked in to the one who gives him power. Uh, he's plucked in to the creator amidst his uh, lack of sight at that particular time. Um, his vision is more powerful and stronger than his lack of sight. And therefore, he's able, amidst all the challenges that surround him in prison, that he's able to come up with this most powerful uh, book in the Bible, very interesting book, a book that takes us and ushers us into the very uh, presence of God and ushers us into the coming of the Lord Jesus. He says, I, John, saw, and I want us just to park right there and understand that unless you have seen, you have no license to speak. Unless you have witnessed, you have no license to witness. Only those that have witnessed 
can or are permitted uh, to bear witness because how shall you bear witness unless you have witnessed uh, so john says i john saw so he takes it personal john has seen and therefore he's able now to write and speak to the world and give this warning message he says i john uh, saw another angel and i want us also to consider the fact that this is not the first time that john sees the angel he says another angel which signifies that prior to this he had seen an angel and not only one angel but from chapter one throughout john sees angels uh, but he says i saw another angel so this is a continuation of the visions that John has been receiving from God. He says, and I, John, saw another angel, and the angel is in the context of the one who has sent with a message. So basically we would say the angel simply means a messenger, the one who carries the message. He's ready to convey a message but he is powered by the one who gave him the message and he's not alone he's so powerful and john says i saw the messenger i saw the messenger but he says i saw another angel and coming back to the fact that this is not the first time that he sees the angel. This tells us that it's important that time and again, we must have another angel amongst us. We should never be limited to certain angels, but we need to have another angel, another angel. When we have seen one angel, it's important that we see another angel uh, I'm talking about a messenger. I'm talking here about one who is willing to be used by God. We are tired of people who come up with excuses when it's time that they must bear witness. John says, I saw another angel. So he was unlimited in terms of the number of angels that he had been exposed to in his vision. He says, I saw another angel and i pray to god this morning that we may have not one angel who's going to proclaim the gospel the good news of salvation that we may have multiple angels and that we may have a generation of angels a generation of messengers who are willing to take up the cross and witness about the coming of the Lord Jesus and tell the world the good news of salvation and tell the world about the great physician and tell the world about the one who's soon to come and tell the world about the one who restores and tell the one about the one who mends the relationships and tell the world about the one who's above everyone who's more powerful and almighty who has authority who never loses power who never loses and never sleeps nor slumber it's important that we come and avail ourselves particularly during a time as this where there is a pandemic crisis around us and there is wailing in the land he says i saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven says another angel fly in the midst of heaven this is a worldwide movement that is proclaiming the message to the world and is going to be implemented this vision that john sees through those who are availing themselves to be used by the holy spirit and it could mean preachers who are preaching a sermon on the pulpit. It could mean a sermon on the radio. It could mean a Facebook live message that has been live streamed. It could mean another virtual program. It could mean a tract or a book distribution. Never take such lightly, particularly now. 
Because God is drawing his people to himself. God is bringing everyone closer to himself and to the knowledge of the truth. There is an angel that is flying in the midst of heaven. And allow me to pause right there and talk about the flying. Flying signifies the speed at which the gospel shall be proclaimed. This is a warning message in the book of Revelation chapter 14 verses 6 and 7. God is warning the world about the crisis that is soon to come. God is warning the world about the coming of the Lord Jesus. God is warning the world about the pain, the torture, the suffering. He's warning the world about the preparation for what is coming ahead. And therefore, when we hear all these things, we better not take them for granted, but we better make a decision for Jesus. Uh, there is a slowness. There is a slowness. Allow me to talk about the slowness of the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus. The Bible speaks of the angel flying. So there is some kind of agency here. There is a sense of agency in proclaiming this warning message. And simply because there is no time, the angel is not seen in the vision walking. Like some of the preachers walk. The, the angel is not seen in the vision running. Because that's too slow for what is coming ahead of us. The angel is seen by John flying because there is a sense of agency. The message must go to the entire world and over 7 billion people that are in the world need to know, need to hear about the testimony of John, about the word of God, about the gospel of Jesus. He says, and I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven. In the midst of heaven, not too far away from the earth, not too far away from the people on the earth, lest the gospel is irrelevant. So this is a relevant gospel that is being preached, being proclaimed by John here. So the angel is flying right in the midst of heaven. He's trying to balance both um, the heavens and the earth. He's, he's right there in the midst of heaven and he's flying at a very high speed to ensure that each one of us receives the gospel. And he says, I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven. And he says he had the everlasting gospel. This was the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. So it's a universal gospel. It's everlasting, but it's also universal. So in other words, this gospel is for all people. All God's creation deserves this message. That would warn them. Everybody deserves to know this message. The Methodists need to know this message. The Charismatics need to know about this message. The Adventists need to know about this message. The Catholics need to know this message. The older folks and the younger folks need to know and hear this message. The poor need to know about this message and the rich need to know about this message. The learned and the unlearned need to know about this message. It's for all people, those who can speak for themselves and those that cannot speak, they need to know about this message. He says, I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel. And I love it when he says the everlasting gospel. The gospel means the good news. And I want to say to someone who's listening to this, who's surrounded only by the bad news in their lives, and there is just death one time to another. There's just wailing, there is crying, there is sickness, there is COVID in the family, and all of us are affected. I have some good news for you. For every bad news, there is good news. 
There is good news for COVID-19 crisis. There is good news for the pain that you are in. There is good news for the marriage that is falling apart. There is good news for that relationship that has grown sour. There is a good news for somebody lying in ICU and they are restless and helpless. But there is good news and that good news is that Jesus reigns. He reigns and even though it may seem like he has lost power, but I've got some good news. My Bible tells me that at the end, his name shall be proclaimed. All people shall bow before him. All knees shall proclaim and bow before him. And all tongues shall say, yes, he's Lord. There is good news of salvation and everyone shall bow before him. I've got some good news for the viewers. And the good news is what John has seen. The angel proclaiming. For every bad news that you listen to on social media, on news, there is good news. And you and I need to be involved in the proclamation of the good news of salvation. There's just too much negativity that is going on around us. And it's time that we break this monotony of negativity and learn to praise God because there is good news for each one of us, good news for every circumstance, good news for every situation, good news for every people. For if God be for us, then who can be against us? We have no fear of what is coming against us because we have been promised uh, the good news of salvation. And this gospel shall be preached to all people. Uh, all the earth and every nation, kindred, tongue, and the people. And to go into verse 7, the Bible says, And he said with a loud voice. So he's not even soft when it comes to the proclamation of this gospel. Saying with a loud voice. Listen, everybody. Fear God and Give glory to him. Fear God, not mankind, but fear God, not the preacher, but fear God, not your parents, but fear God. The word fear there is in the context of the awareness, the consciousness of the presence of God. And I want to say to you, while we go through what we're going through, God is forever with us. And he has promised that I will never leave you nor forsake you. God's presence is with his people. And he promised that I will find my dwelling amongst them. So we have no fear, even though it may seem like we have been left alone, abandoned, forsaken. But we have some good news for somebody who feels forsaken this morning. God is with us. And therefore, you better be aware of his presence that whatever that you do you may fear him fear him not in the sense of being afraid of him but fear him knowing that he's watching us fear him knowing that he's forever with us fear him because you are aware that God is with us Emmanuel God is with us fear God and give glory to him we live in a time when Man is drawing all glory to himself. But this is the time when we must give glory to God our creator and not our bishops and not our apostles and not our prophets and not our pastors and not our leaders. No, but God receives the glory because he is worthy of our glory. Fear God. This is the message of the first angel in the book of Revelation chapter 14 verse 6, the one that John saw, fear God and give glory to him. Fear God for the hour of his judgment is come. This is the time 
when we need to know that the hour of his judgment is not coming, it's not coming ahead of us, but it has already come and the Bible has been written for many thousands and thousands of years ago and this message was there. So the Bible is declaring to us the hour of his judgment is right here with us. So in other words, in the heavenly sanctuary, judgment continues and therefore fear God whenever you do what you do. Fear God when you are found sleeping on the wrong bed. Fear God when you feel like scolding. Fear God when you want to think badly about the other person. Fear God when you want to put a judgment on someone else. The hour of his judgment has come and therefore fear God and give him glory in your life. Give him glory by the way you act. Give him glory through your attitude. Give him glory by how you eat. Give him glory by how you live. Give him glory by how you minister. Give him glory by how you do your work. Give him glory in your profession, in your business. Fear God and give him glory for the hour of his judgment has come. The hour of his judgment has come. And it ends by saying, as I'm just about to conclude, not only should we fear God and give him glory, but we should most importantly worship him. We should worship him. It's one thing just to say worship him. But it's another when the instruction says, Worship him that made the heavens. Come on now. And the earth. So this is a different God from the many gods we've been exposed to. He is the God who made the heavens and the earth. We grew up being taught that we, we, we evolved. We, 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 we evolved. We evolved. We come from lower species. But, but, but this warning message is coming to each one of us to remind us that we never evolved, but we were made. And I want each one of you just to say uh, out what, and maybe if you could just write on the comment and says, I I've been made, I've been made. You never evolved. You, you've been made. You've been made. Um, God made you. You are so special. You are so unique. And no one else should take that away from you. Let me tell you something as I'm concluding this, that this message is taking us back to the creator. Not to our own evolution, but to the creator. God has created the earth. God has created the heavens. God has created the animals. God has created the vegetation. God has created even you as a mankind. God has made you. You are so special. And therefore never be lied unto. And be told that you evolved. God wants us to know that we have been made. And today, I'm so glad that God made me. I'm so glad that I never evolved. I'm so glad that God took time to make me. I'm so glad to know that God took his special time to create the special person in me. God has endowed a special blessing upon you during your creation. He made you and therefore, because he made you fear him, give him glory. Because he made you for himself. He made you so that you can glorify. He made you so that you can give glory to him. And I pray that God may bless you as you get encouraged and inspired by this message. It's a warning message to each one of us. God bless you. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you. We thank you, Heavenly Father, this time of the day, Lord, where we can be so encouraged, so inspired by your word, Father, that reminds us 
that you made us. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that you, you have taken time to work in us. Investing all your beauty in us. All your glory in us. So that in turn, Lord, we can give you all honor and glory. And this time, Lord, this morning as we are listening to this message, you are making decisions to choose you, Father, and fear you and not man. Forgive us, Lord, for fearing our parents, for fearing our friends, for fearing our pastors. We want to fear you. Receive glory from us in Jesus' name.